ಸೋಮತ್ತಿ ನಂದನ್ನ ಧ್ವಜ Ha 
ಗೌರವಾಂದ್ರಿಂದ Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shila Prabhu Pai Ki Jai So I was asked to speak on Chaitanya Charitamrita So I'll speak a little bit about what is Chaitanya Charitamrita of course Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati makes a nice comment which is quite unknown he says that those who read chaitanya charitamrita before a read shrimad bhagavatam can understand shrimad bhagavatam <laughs> you know we sometimes we hear that we should approach bhagavatam prior but then bhakti siddhanta saraswati qualifies that by saying that the life of chaitanya uh, lord lord chaitanya is actually the living bhagavatam and you can see in the very beginning of the shrimad bhagavatam shila prabhupad gives a, a synopsis of the life of lord chaitanya as a prelude to introducing shrimad bhagavatam so that's that sort of confirms that principle that actually lord chaitanya is living bhagavatam so when we approach lord chaitanya we can actually understand you know we have a greater understanding we're more equipped to understanding the pastimes of radha and krishna and shri vrindavan dam which is the essence of the 10th canto uh chaitanya charitamrita we all know the author is krishna das kaviraj goswami who who penned this work at the age of 95 <laughs> he began the work he was requested um having the notes of sarup damodar goswami and raghunath das goswami 
who very carefully took notes of the activities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu while they were both engaged in serving Lord Chaitanya. Uh, based on those notes, he expanded them and uh, added many of the verses of Sri of Srimad Bhagavatam. And sometimes people ask the question, you know, why did Srila Prabhupada choose uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita over, Shrima, over uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat? When Chaitanya Bhagavat is considered to be the foremost uh, philosophical teachings of the life of Lord Chaitanya, of course, Ch in Chaitanya Bhagavat you have a lot of Lord, about Lord Nityananda, that's not mentioned in, in Chaitanya Charitamrita because uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur is actually a disciple of Lord Nityananda. But one of the reasons, there's a couple reasons. One is that in order to support the, the Leela, there is a lot of tattva in Chaitanya Charitamrita. That is the statements of Srimad Bhagavatam. There are hundreds of verses that Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami includes in the narration of Lord Chaitanya's Leelas to support the tattva, the principle of what Lord Chaitanya is teaching through his activities. And of course another reason, we might, sometimes we might even say this is the main reason is Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj had already done commentaries on Chaitanya Bhagavat. So it's kind of the etiquette not to try to surpass one spiritual master by trying to over, you know, by writing something based on what, they, of course you can take what they say and give some further understanding, but Prabhupada didn't want to touch Chaitanya Bhagavat because his, his spiritual master wrote extensive purports on many of the verses in Chaitanya Bhagavat. And Chaitanya Charitamrita is quite amazing when you see how it's laid out. The very beginning chapters, the first 12 chapters, Krishna Das Kavigaraj Goswami establishes the position of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The first chapter is all about ta the tattva of Guru, Guru tattva. And then you hear about uh, uh, verses glorifying Lord Nityananda, Madhueta. And then chapters on Lord Nityananda, chapters on Advaita Acharya. And then, of course, the seventh chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's interesting because when uh, we were first you know, beginning our Hare Krishna movement, I can't say I was there from the beginning, but I joined in 1972, 73, around that time. And all we had was that the teachings of Lord Chaitanya at the time. And we also had, uh, Srila Prabhupada had given us uh, what is called the five features of, Lo uh, of Lord Chaitanya, which was the seventh chapter of Adi Lila. The Prabhupada gave us the seventh chapter of Adi Lila before he gave any of the other chapters, uh, which that chapter is simply about Sri Harinam Sankirtan, the glories of Sri Harinam Sankirtan, the glories of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That chapter is, uh, is saturated with ex explanations and verses on the glories of chanting the holy name and supported by a lot of philosophical statements from various scriptures. The Prabhupada gave us that first. And after reading that for a little while, then gradually the Adi Lila started to manifest. For the first seven, 12 chapters, Krishna Das Kariraj very clearly and establishes who is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then, of course, after chapter 13 through chapter 17, which is the completion of Adi Lila, he talks about uh, Lord Chaitanya's... Uh, uh, childhood pastimes and his pastimes just prior for him before he actually took initiation from Ishwara Puri. In the Madhya Leela, which is the longest section of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's 25 chapters. Hare Krishna. Hare.
എന്ത് സൗ സ്വീറ്റ് താങ്ക് യു Uh, in those 25 chapters, um, Lord Chaitanya begins his travel. He takes, of course, he takes sannyas, stays at the house of Advaita Charya, and then he travels through South India and uh, preaches to various groups and meets different people. He, 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 he preaches to the Buddhists. He preaches to the Shankarites. He preaches to the Muslims. And he travels and he establishes his movement in that section also as the Rathiyatra ceremony. And of course, the prior of the Rathiyatra ceremony, cleaning of the Gundicha temple. And then it ends up with more of the esoteric pastimes of Krishna as he approaches the Ancha Leela. And the Ancha Leela is quite confusing for most scholars, because scholars also try to understand Lord Chaitanya's philosophy by reading these, these books, but it's like licking the bottle of a honey on the outside because they're not engaged in devotional service. They can only give some philosophical understanding, which always falls for short because the philosophical understanding has to be understood by those who actually are practicing the devotional principles. If you're not practicing devotional service, You can't understand simply by reading about Lord Chaitanya. And so in those um, last 20 chapters, the Lord goes into his ecstasies of love of God in the Gambira, in Jagannath Puri, many of his pastimes with his devotees, with Sanatan Goswami, with Jagannanda Pandit. And his um, deeper expressions of uh, ecstatic love of God are described in them. And of course, the last chapter in the entire Chaitanya Charitamrita is the Shikshastakam prayers, which were, they say, which is um, partially true, that this is the only thing that Lord Chaitanya ever wrote. But in his early life, when he was a scholar, he wrote a book on Nayak and grammar. And that book was actually quite famous, but someone else had written another book on the same topic. It was another personality, another sage. And when he heard that um, uh, Nimai Pandit, who was, you know, Lord Chaitanya in his early years, had written uh, the same topic, he was very unhappy. And he went to Nimai Pandit and said, You know, you wrote your book on gram grammar and Nayak, and I wrote the same thing. And but because you are so popular, no one will read my book. <laughs> he was feeling unhappy, so the Lord said, "All right, if that's the case." So he took his book and threw it in the Ganga. <laughs> so we have no record of that book, but that was also written by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his early years, and. Uh, Of course, the Shikshastakam prayers are, as we heard from Sarvadrik, I didn't hear his presentation, but we know uh, this is the essence of pure devotional service in these eight verses. Srila Prabhupada would say that the six Goswamis of Vrindavan wrote all, all of their books based on those eight verses. So you can unpack those verses unlimitedly because they're so deep. And the, the whole process of devotional service, Sambandha, Bhideya, Prayojana, Sadhana Bhakti, Baba Bhakti, Prema Bhakti, and the gradual progression of the nine stages of Bhakti leading all the way up to Prema Bhakti. So if you can study those, those prayers of Shikshastik, you can understand practically the whole process of devotional service in a nutshell. So Chaitanya Charitamrita is... Um, It's deep in the philosophical and spiritual principles and centered around the activities of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In his travels in, in South India, the Lord was going from place to place and everyone here, everywhere he was going, he actually established the Sankirtan movement simply by his travels. And that was even understood even later by commentaries, commentators 
who had said that actually that the entire subcontinent of India at the time was made Krishna consciousness, Krishna conscious by Lord Chaitanya's preaching. He traveled all the way down from Jagannath Puri, all the way down the uh, eastern side of India to Cape Cormoran, and he came back up on the western side when he got to the area which we know today as Bombay. Uh, it was a different name at the time. It was called Vaipiano. That's the old name of, of Bombay, Vaipian, Vaipian. He crossed over and then went head back towards Jagannath Puri. That took him six years. But in that travels, he established. He, he met so many persons, preached to so many, uh, uh, preached to the message. Of, but he mostly spread the Sankirtan movement. And uh, therefore, when, at, when Prabhupada was here, the devotees, uh, Prabhupada had said that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He took the entire process of pure devotional service, uh, illustrating the, the importance of chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra Sankirtan. And he made practically the entire country of India Krishna conscious. So, and then the devotees would ask Srila Prabhupada, oh, Prabhupada, if he was here and he he made India practical. Why didn't he just take it around the world? <laughs> Prabhupada said, he left it for me to do. <laughs> Prabhupada's humble statement. And uh, that's also how Krishna works. Krishna can make the whole world God conscious overnight if he wants to. But that's not the way he does things. He does it through his devotees. So he empowers his devotees who are surrendered to him to take his meshes. And therefore, they get the credit and they also get the opportunity to go back home, back to Godhead. So the Lord can do anything and everything. It's nothing, and not, there's nothing out of, outside of his, his power, but he leaves it for his the devotees to do so he can glorify his devotees and the devotee gets all the credit and therefore Krishna is happy. <laughs> And Krishna is glorified. So when Lord Chaitanya was traveling, he traveled through one place called Kormashetra. And while he was in Kormashetra, one particular Brahmana, he was also known as the Korma Brahma. And he was a very Paka Brahma. He lived with his family. And uh, he had purposely arranged to, to meet Lord Chaitanya. And he invited Lord Chaitanya to come to his house and stay while he was there in Kormashetra. So the Lord agreed because he could see here was a very ideal Brahmin. So he came to his house and for four days the Lord stayed there and they served him very nicely, taking care of all of his meals, his personal needs. And the Lord gave him his, his association, his, his preaching to them, enlightening them down about the principles of Krishna consciousness. After four days, the Lord had to go on to his mission, so he, he was planning his leaving. As he was leaving, he immediately, of course, uh, took to the road and started to walk. The walk Lord was walking. And then, the Korma Brahma, he started to follow Lord Chaitanya. And, Lord, and then the Lord was walking, he was following, and the Lord looked back and said, and then he approached him, he said, where are you going? said, I'm going with you. <laughs> I cannot bear to be separated from you. I want to be with you always. What about your family? Well, I want to go with you. <laughs> so he didn't even respond to that. Lord Chaitanya was not happy. <laughs> of course, he was, in, he was inspired by his devotion, but at the same time he told him, you know, you stay with your family, and whoever you meet, you preach the glories, of devotion to Lord Krishna. Whoever you meet, you teach them to chant the, chant, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And then he said, be my, by my command, be guru, save the land. And he said, if you do that, you will never leave my association. And so the Lord gave a very important instruction in that particular interchange where he was explaining that one who is serving the Lord 
by preaching the glories of the Lord is un intimately united with the Lord in devotion. Because spiritual life is more is less about physical proximity than more about following the principles that are given to us by our spiritual master and by the previous acharyas, especially that principle of being an instrument for the mercy of the Lord. And that was Srila Prabhupada's instructions. He said, I want each and every one of my disciples to become preachers and spread Krishna consciousness everywhere. And so that was the instruction to this Korma Brahma. So he left and went back home and Lord Chaitanya taught that principle. Grihe tako, bone tako, sabda hari bole dako. Doesn't matter whether you're grihasta, sannyasi, whatever your ashram is, um, just stay there, perfect the activities according to the rules and regulations of the ashram, and become fully Krishna conscious. And then whoever you meet, as, as Prabhupada would write, and he writes in Srimad Bhagavatam, it's the duty of the householders to gather together with family members and friends and have a program and invite one sannyasi guru or one pr traveling preacher and have a program and uh, discuss the principles of Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita and distribute Krishna Prashadam. He said, if you simply do that, then your house will become like a mandir. <laughs> And then it's no longer uh, just a place of living, but it's a place of worship. Sometimes we say that we, when we, we preach in the Western countries, we go to different places and we say, well, how many, how many families are in this congregation? And they'll, they'll give a number. Sometimes they say it maybe it's about 50 or 60. We say, all right, and each one of you one night a month do a program and that way every month you have every day of the month for the entire year you have 365 programs every night <laughs> just one one uh, one degree has to, uh, couple with their family uh, can sponsor a program once a month per, or arrange for prashadam and it's always open devotees can come at any time and then you have Krishna consciousness going on of course, in India, it's different. Krishna consciousness is always going on. But in the Western countries, it gets kind of dry sometimes. So we need to inspire devotees to come together more for kirtan, for sangha, just for association. And satam prasangam mambavirya sambhido bhavanti hitkarna rasayana gata. To hear and chant the glories of the Lord, which gives us nectar, happiness, and elevates the consciousness and brings one ultimately the platform of the uh, devotional service. While Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was also in passing in that area of Kormashetra, there was one particular leper. His name was Vasudev. And he, because his leprosy was so severe, he, had, he was living by himself. He could not be with anyone else. He had such a severe case of leprosy. His whole body was full of sores. But, but Vasudeva was very humble by nature and he was a devotee. And so one, sometimes one of the worms his, in his body, there were different worms living there. The worms would fall out and go onto the ground Vasudeva, out of his natural humility, would pick up that worm and put it back in where it fell from. And he would think, oh, God has given this worm a pl my body as a place of livelihood. So therefore, it belongs here. That was his humility. Now he was also, he also heard that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was coming through Kormashetra. He knew he couldn't associate with the Lord because of his condition. But he just wanted to see the Lord from a distance. But Mahaprabhu had passed through without the opportunity of Vasudev. And so when Vasudev learned that Lord Chaitanya had already passed through, he was feeling so wretched, so unhappy. He said, just see, see my situation. I'm so, so wretched, so foolish. I didn't even get the chance to see the Lord. That's all I wanted to do. When the Lord understood the mind of Vasudev, 
the Lord turned around, came back to Kurush to the Kormashetra, went right to the place where Vasudev was saying. When he saw Vasudev, the Lord immediately ran up to Vasudev and embraced him. Now Vasudev was taken by a you know, surprise, the Lord just came in. Lord Chaitanya is big. He's got, you know, he's like two meters high. And he locked him in an embrace. And when he embraced him, his whole body became completely healed. His body was now healthy and normal. And all of his leprosy was gone. But when Lord Chaitanya was looking at him, he was seeing, Vasudev, you don't look at all happy. Why are you happy? He said, my dear Lord, yes, I am not happy. <laughs> now you would think, wow, getting embraced by the Lord, his, all of his disease would gone. It would be, you know, and not only happy, but he would be completely joyful. But he wasn't happy. And then the Lord inquired, and he said, my dear Lord, because you have shown me your special mercy, People will now understand and they will praise me. They will say so many things about me. And then I will become proud. And that is worse than death. This, is a, this was his mentality. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he responded by saying, Vasudev, if you do one thing, you will never become proud. And the Lord Chaitanya gave this principle for all of us. What is that statement? He said, if you incessantly, that means continuously, chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. If you incessantly chant the holy names of the Lord 24 hours a day, he said, you will never become proud. <laughs> So here's the formula for uh, destroying any possibility of becoming proud and destroying pride if it's there. Just simply chant the holy name of the Lord continuously. And then one is in association with Krishna through his transcendental name. There was one particular devotee, he's kind of a devotee, but he was more like a scholar devotee. His name was Devananda Pandit. Devananda Pandit, he was quite elderly to Lord Chaitanya, and actually he appeared before Lord Chaitanya. And during that time, he would give discourses and speak on Srimad Bhagavatam. In fact, he could narrate the whole Bhagavatam and also give commentaries on many of the verses. But his commentaries were more or less in the mood of Gyan and Karma and not in Bhakti. But he had such a beautiful expression of how he would chant the verses that he had, he had attracted a following. And see, he had quite a large following. He became popular as a reciter of Srimad Bhagavatam. So one day, this is prior to Lord Chaitanya's appearance, Srivas Thakur, who also uh, appeared before Lord Chaitanya, he came to one of the narrations of Bhagavatam by uh, Devananda Pandit. And he was sitting there, uh, listening along with many of his followers. And Devananda Pandit had the... the uh, he had the, what they call it, the power of Shakti. He could speak so sweetly and so, so devotionally, but at the same time, he wasn't a devotee. <laughs> he knew how to speak in such a way. He didn't know the essence of Bhagavatam. He knew the external manifestations of the words only. And so when Srivas Thakur was listening, he was actually starting to feel really happy and he started to exhibit certain ecstatic symptoms just listening to Devananda Pandit. That's possible even from persons who are expert at speaking. But it's external. It's not really, 
it doesn't satisfy the heart ultimately and it doesn't bring one to surrender in devotional service. So Srivas was listening and he was going into ecstasy and he was expressing emotions that were somewhat disturbing to the general body of people who are listening to Devananda Pandit. And so some of the followers of Devananda Pandit picked up Srivas Thakur while he was in his ecstasy and just carried him outside, put him on the ground and left him and went back in. Devananda Pandit didn't say anything about what they had done. And then Srivas, after some time, realized what happened. He picked himself up, went back to his place, Feeling very, very sad, he started to read uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. At that time, later on, Lord Chaitanya explained that pastime to him and said, Do you remember when the followers of Devananda Pandit took you out and put you on the ground? You were feeling very sad. You went to your room and you started to read Srimad Bhagavatam and you were reading and reading and reading. At that time, I entered into your heart just to give you happiness and peace of mind. And then, of course, Sri Vais remembered that. So Devananda Pandit had committed an offense to Sri Vais Thakur. One day when Lord Chaitanya was walking, Devananda Pandit was walking in the opposite direction. They were coming towards each other. Lord Chaitanya said, stopped right in front of Devananda Pandit and said, Devananda Pandit, you don't know anything about Srimad Bhagavatam. And then he, he said it in a very angry mood and then he just walked away. But somehow or other, Devananda Pandit re redeemed himself because when Lord Chaitanya was, was engaged in Sankirtan in Jagannath Puri during the Rathayatra festival, the Lord was dancing in ecstasy and crowds were somehow gathering around the Lord. And they, the crowds were coming in too close and the, the Lord was having a difficult time in his dance. So Devananda Pandit was there. He was an elderly person. He had a, his cane and he was pushing... No, actually, I'm sorry. It wasn't Lord Chaitanya. It was Vakrishwar Pandit. That's right. Excuse me. Vakrishwar Pandit was dancing in ecstasy and the, the, the devotees were coming around Vakrishwara Pandit and they were getting really close. It was hard for him to actually continue his dance. So Devananda Pandit with his stick very carefully and very devotionally pushed everyone back so Vakrishwara Pandit could dance. When Lord Chaitanya heard that, he was very happy. And in one sense he forgave him for all of his offenses to Srivas Thakur. And then, of course, the Lord actually praised him for his service. So here's an example. When you serve a devotee and you please, when you serve the devotee nicely according to the situation, that pleases the Lord. And then one may, one, when one pleases the Lord, then talk to a porn and gentleman. In other words, one becomes uh, fixed in devotional service simply by pleasing the Lord. But those who offend the devotees, then the opposite happens. They can no longer practice devotional service or even find happiness in association with devotees. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made that point in, it's stated in Antya Leela, that one who criticizes my devotee um, and still chants the holy name of the Lord, even though they chant the holy name of the Lord, but they, fought, they criticize the devotees, that holy name destroys them <laughs> and it becomes like poison to the person and those who who serve the Lord and chant the holy name then they are actually drinking nectar so the same holy name which is Krishna himself in sound vibration destroys destroys those persons who actually offend devotees through the process of criticizing devotees. And those who serve the devotees and please the devotees, they, uh, they make progress on the path of devotional service and they become happy. They become happy. <laughs> How are we doing on time? Huh? Ten minutes left? Yeah. 
Sorry if I was late. I uh, somehow or other miscalculated the time I was supposed to be here. So we only have 10 minutes left. And if anyone would like to ask any questions or make a comment about anything, yes, in the first row here. Тот, кто оскорбляет Шоу Группаду, э, искажая его учения, и кто другой критикует это, то есть является ли это критикой? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, you mentioned about the criticism, and there are some people who criticize uh, Shila Prabhupada or openly offend him. And if we criticize them, are we doing are we criticizing or is that standing up for him if well they, if they criticize him by um, you know making uh, his words tainting his words well it depends how you do that in other words to criticize the criticizer is another form of criticism but you should correct that person by explaining in a very clear and respectful way that whatever you're saying is uh, because you have to know what they're saying and what they're finding fault and and show that actually they are wrong because Srila Prabhupada even if apparently looks like he made some mistake it's only apparent it's only apparent sometimes Prabhupada would he would be giving a lecture and then he would forget a verse or he would chant the verse differently than the actual verse. And people would think, oh, wow, he, he forgot the verse. If you find fault with that, it's like f trying to find fault with the moon because it has a little spot on it. <laughs> it's giving great light, it's giving great benedictions to the whole world, but at the same time, if you look at the little pockmark in the moon and you describe it like that, so that's... That criticism is is offensive, obviously. And if you, it's directed, of course, towards Prashila Prabhupada, that is Guru Avagya, that is finding fault not only with the spiritual master, but with the founder or chari of the entire Hare Krishna movement, who spread Krishna consciousness worldwide. I can't hear you. I'm trying to translate here, Maharaj. Please, 100 words per hour doesn't oh. help the translation, please. Oh, okay. I'll, uh -huh. I'll reduce to 99. I'm okay. sorry. Okay, please. 90, 96 okay. would be good. Thing. All right. I, I'm, I didn't realize that I was supposed to stop. <laughs> Don't stop. Did you translate? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'll go a little slower. So, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says one thing. He says, if you want to receive my full mercy, I, no, he doesn't say it like that. He says, I give my full mercy to a devotee who do, does two things. Who develops a taste for chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and who becomes a dosha darshi. Uh, dosha means faults and adosha means no faults. Darshi means to see. One who does not see the faults of others. One who does not see the faults of others and chant and develops a taste for chanting the holy name, Mahaprabhu's mercy comes like ocean, ocean waves upon that, that personality. So even if you find, see faults in someone, look for the good qualities. Sometimes you can't help seeing a fault. But if you're finding faults with Srila Prabhupada, you really have a problem. <laughs> You really have a problem. That means you, you don't know anything about Krishna consciousness. So the devotee should carefully try to correct that person by explaining that uh, what you're saying is wrong and here's the right understanding. You should be able to explain what he says or what she says is actually incorrect. <laughs> and it is. 
हरे कृष्ण महाराज धन्यवाद प्रणाम महाराज हरे कृष्ण महाराज माई क्वेरी इज दैट देवानंद पंडित सपोज टू सीक फॉरगिवनेस फ्रॉम शिवास बट डिड ही सीक फॉरगिवनेस फ्रॉम शिवास इट डज इन मैंशन दैट एनी वर्ड इट्स इज दैट लॉर्ड चैतानी वॉज सो प्लीज दैट ही सर वा कृष्ण पंड इट सो नाइस इट दैट द लॉर्ड वॉज हैप्पी विथ हेम एंड गेव मिज मर्सी ओके महाराज Yeah, but that is actually the etiquette or the protocol that one should follow. But in this case, I think Lord Chaitanya just um, Devananda's pundit's offense to Sri Vasudevakor was an offense of inaction. He failed to stop his disciples from removing Sri Vasudevakor. He didn't do anything directly to Sri Vas, but it was an offense of inaction. when he should have said something but he didn't so it was a slight offense okay. and maharaj my second query is that like chota haridas uh, i believe he was uh, in uh, brahmacharya ashram he was a brahmachari uh. so uh, he chatana mahapur did not forgive him and afterwards he committed suicide also so can you explain that lord chaitanya did forgive him because um that's mentioned that actually um lord chay wanted lord chay tony wanted to give use chota haridas as an example for everyone from time and memorial that one one in the renounced order of life should not intimately associate with women so he was begging rice from madhavi devi and we don't know the details of that interaction but lord chaitanya saw it as transgressing proper etiquette for a for a sanyasi so when he committed suicide he remained in his ethereal body and he was always singing the glories of lord of krishna to lord chaitanya and lord chaitanya had a relationship with him on that level so that was sweet but it's mentioned there were seven reasons why the lord actually uh, acted in that particular way he was like hard as a thunderbolt and the devotees were also begging the lord to forgive him but the lord didn't want to hear anything in that case he wanted to teach that example so many times he would use his devotees to teach a particular principle that he wanted to establish as his as his teachings so maharaj chota uh, haridas uh, was in uh, sannyas order at that time it says yeah okay. yeah he was okay. thank sin, you thank yeah. you maharaj yeah was in the brahmachari mm -hmm. <laughs> anyone else mm -hmm. any other questions maharaj but chota haridas met a old lady not young lady and madhavi devi she was elderly she was the sister of siki mahiti but madhavi devi was an intimate associate of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu it doesn't talk about their intimate because it says lord chaitanya had three and a half intimate associates ramananda roy surup damodar siki mahiti and madhavi devi who which was the sister of siki mahiti so she was a very elevated personality but that doesn't mean that because she was elderly his mind was it wasn't disturbed it was lord chaitanya could understand that that when he was doing that his mind became disturbed all he was doing was begging rice but we don't know it doesn't explain the details of that interaction <laughs> but she was a great personality she was considered to be one of the intimate associates of lord chaitanya but there's no record that we have of lord chaitanya discussing intimate pastimes with her but it mentions that uh, that was her position actually it's interesting but yeah you know you know the desire to enjoy in the in the opposite sex doesn't leave the, even at the elderly age that's still there <laughs> yeah
that can still that can be still there. So somehow or other, um, Lord Satani used that example in a very extreme way. He wanted to make that point. He wanted to teach that principle from time immemorial. That vantasi. Vantasi means one who eats and then vomits and then eats their own vomit. He said he referred to that as this, and Prabhupada talks about that too on a morning walk. Prabhupada was talking about how uh, if a sannyasi, you know, somehow or other uh, breaks their sannyasi and has an intimate relations with the opposite sex, then it's better to commit suicide. Better to give up your life than to continue into this false, this false idea that I'm, a, I'm renounced. When Prabhupada was talking about that, of course, this is something that you'll find out later in uh, Vyasaki's third volume of his Radha Dhamma Vilas. He describes that that in in that discussion with Pra uh, Vishnu John Swami was there. And Vishnu John Swami heard Srila Prabhupada speaking like that, and he became very very concerned. So he drifted away from the devotees during that morning walk and no one ever saw him again. It was understood that he gave up his life by coming to um, Rishikesh, the Ganga, and he uh, drowned himself. In the this was given information by the people who were involved in it. But when Prabhupada was speaking during that time, Prabhupada went on later, because one devotee asked the question, Prabhupada, if all of our, if our sannyasis did that, we would have no sannyasis in our movement. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, I am not Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> so if you fall down, you get back up. If you have to, you can change ashrams, you know, get get involved in the Grihastha Hasram, be a nice Grihastha, get back in good standing, execute devotional service and make progress. So Prabhupada wasn't uh, endorsing that idea of suicide, although that's what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said. That's Prabhupada said, you can hear it, I am not Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> I, I, if you, and then he explained that, you know, if that happens, get back up. And uh, again, Apichet Sudaracharo Bajate Mamananya Bhaka Sadoeva Samanta Gya Vavyavyasi Sohisa. Even if one commits the most abominable activities, if they're engaged in devotional service, they are saintly. And anyone who sees that way also becomes saintly. Bhakti Vinota Akur makes that point. So, to fall down, it's possible, but to get back up, that's first class. One may not be able to retain the same status as they had within the society, but still one can practice devotional service and again, make progress towards pure devotional service. So, yeah. So we shouldn't, we, it's not that if someone in that order breaks, they should commit suicide. That's not our program. No. Although that's what Lord Chaitanya established. But Prabhupada made it clear, that's not what I'm preaching. <laughs> Is that all right? Any other questions? <laughs> Maharaj, uh, regarding Devananda Pandit, uh, you, as you have said that uh, that he was speaking from the point of Jnana and Karma, not from the point of Bhakti. But uh, then uh, my, my question is, Sivas Pandit, he was such a great personality that he is one of the uh, Deity from Panchatattva. 
He's so exalted. Yeah, he's the incarnation of Narada Muni. Yeah, so then how he's, you know, he was you know, <laughs> convinced so much. I was hoping nobody asked that question. <laughs> but anyway, since you asked, we will try to give a clarification. It was just the Shakti of Devananda Pandit, the way he could speak Bhagavatam. His conclusions were one thing, but the way he would express the verses in the Bhagavatam was so apparently very pleasing. He had the power to speak very, very pleasingly. And Prabhupada also warns us that, you know, many people have that, but they also, you know, sometimes, um, what's, what's it, what is it called? Um, milk touched by the lips of a serpent becomes poisonous. So, yeah, even, even Mukunda, Mukunda was going to hear Yoga Vashishta from various persons who were exalting karma and gyad over bhakti. So, we have to be careful, even the Mayavadis, the Mayavadis, they chant Hare Krishna or they chant mantras, they worship the deity also. So, if we don't know what is their inner mood, why they do it, we might think, oh, they're nice devotees. But the, the whole goal or their understanding of their worship has a different goal than, you know, devotion to Krishna. It's about liberation or it's about, you know, attaining the position of the Supreme. But David Pandit, he was, he was not, he, you know, Lord Chaitanya even said to him, you know, I, I'm going to take your Bhagavatam and I'm going to rip it up. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya was so angry with him when he saw him after he had uh, failed to say anything when Sri Vastakar was taken out. So, yeah, there are many people who can recite scriptures in a very pleasing and attractive way. Then you have to understand what is their, what is their goal, what is their motivation. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, please ask for my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, uh, regarding uh, you are saying uh, Swarup Damodar Goswami and uh, Ramanandara and Sikhi Mahiti and uh, Madhavi Devi, these four are the three and a half are the uh, close associates of Lord Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. so, Intim intimate associates. Intimate associates, yeah. So, uh, can we see any past, any past tense related with Sikhi Mahiti? Uh, I asked the same question, and there's there is some statements written somewhere, but it's not in it's not written in Chaitanya Charitamrita or in Sri Chaitanya Bhagwan. But there is statements made that they they discussed uh, Radha and Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. That was told to me by one senior devotee. So um, that's the only reference I have. But you, you, know, you might be able to do some research and see where it is written. But it's mentioned somewhere. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that reference. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mahara. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai. Yeah. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, jai. Si Harinam Shankirtan ki jai, jai. Nitai Gaur Primanande Hari Hari Bo His Holiness Chandra Swami Maharaj ki